morning and welcome back to my channel today now i wanted to do my introduction outside just to change things up a little bit but it was too cold and windy because it is winter time now here with us now today's video is going to be about rendering tallow or actually any animal fat it doesn't need to be tallow tallow is usually the name of the word that they use for beef fat and i know you can get deer tallow and um bear tallow and all kinds of tallow um lard is usually used for pigs i don't know why pigs got their own little name and the rest have to share everything but anyhow the, the wings let them have their own thing there now with tallow it's a special fat in soap making for me because it is very high in stearic acid um it's tallow is about 44 percent stearic acid uh, for a beef tallow in any way so and stearic acid produces a very stable shaving foam like kind of foam in your soap so they use it actually quite a lot in um, shaving soaps as well um, it is a very stable foam it can as you work it up it feels very creamy and it's got a very nice skin feel to it now uh, if you don't want to use tallow in your uh, soap you can replace it with uh, palm oil as well palm oil's got nearly identical uh, saponification value it also produces the same hardness in your soap, the same about uh, foaming ability and so on. So palm oil is very similar to it. If you want to go 100% vegan, you can replace it with uh, shea butter as well. Shea butter is also high in stearic acid, also produces a hard part of soap and a long levity is also quite high there. Now to render your soap, oh not your render your soap we're going to render the tallow to make soap <laughs> um you there's certain things that you need to do certain things that you maybe don't have to do or maybe should not do so we're going to go through all of that and i'm going to show you how to render it so that you can have a very nice clean fat without a funny or funky smell to it when i buy my fat um i ask the butcher usually to just re um mince it for me coarsely this helps quite a lot to just melt it down quite easily if you buy fat in large blocks then it is really difficult to actually just melt it down and to get it going so what i do is i take a pot and i fill it with about an inch inch and a half of water then i'm just putting it on the heat bring it to boil and then i will add the fat to it and just melt it down the reason why i add water to this is to prevent it for overheating the moment when you start to overheat your fat that it starts to um, cook the little bit meaty bits to crisps that is when you get that meaty smell in your fat if you just use water it can't go over 100 degrees celsius and you know that you're not going to overheat your um, fat here so i'm just going to add some here and start to melt it down I usually fold my pot quite a lot because it's going to shrink down as it melts and um, I might add some more water to it as I need to but there's no really right and wrong way to do it you can um, melt down your fat directly and um, without any water in it because when it's melted down now what I need to do is I will have to scoop it off the water and, and separate the water from the oil as well so but I don't mind doing that I don't like meaty smelling fats to use for my soap making so this is just the way that I do it, it works quite well for me and there it is in the pot I'm just going to leave it for a while I'm going to put the lid on just to make sure that I'm going to keep some of that moisture in there until it starts to melt down properly so I'll be back in a while okay it's been about five minutes or so and you can see it already melted down quite a bit so I will be adding some more fat to this and fill it up a little bit again you can see the water is boiling there I reduced the heat a little bit so I'm just gonna cook that down while it's busy rendering there um, I've got all my containers ready that I want to store it in so what I've done is I'm using a sieve and I'm just gonna line my strainer with a piece of cotton now this can be an old t-shirt anything like that all t-shirts do work quite quite nice so i like to clip 
the little bulldog clips around it because the moment you start to pour all stuff in here um, you don't really want to try to grab it when it falls over and so on so this is what I'm going to do here and I've got another pot here I'm just going to put in a knee bit. so what I'm doing here is I'm going to pour my melted down um, fats in here just strain it through and let it cool a little bit in here before I just move it over to my plastic containers and that's about all that there is to it I'm going to show you still how I'm going to strain it but it's really not brain science it just takes a lot of time um, I don't see any flies yet it is winter time here but I can guarantee you the flies will show up in a few moments they just love the smell of cooking meat here so but yeah I'm just going to add some fat to my pot here again because it's been cooking down a little bit scoopy thingy I have 20 kilograms of fat here today so we will measure it afterwards when we cook out all the fat and see how much our gain was there I've never measured it before I just usually cook it down and use whatever I get from it but for this video's purposes I will weigh all the fat that we can get from it okay our very first fly is here he just joined us to the party most of you are going to have some friends around here as well so here you can see it already started to cook down um, there's some meaty bit that is floating on top that I'm just going to scoop out here and clean it out if you scoop deeper there is more meaty bits at the bottom so it's these ones that you don't really want to crisp up in your oil or your fat because that is what's going to cause all the meaty smell or cause the meaty smell in your soap so I'm just going to strain or scoop all of this out um, it does help if you have a little spoon with holes that you can just work most of this out of your stuff and the ones on top as well So it's quite a challenge to wring the fat and hold a camera in your one hand. I've never done this before. It's a new experience for me. And these meaty bits, excellent for animal shelters. I'm not going to eat it myself, definitely not. But there are so many hungry people and hungry animals at the moment with this COVID thing. It's unbelievable. So nothing of it's going to go to waste at all. I will use every single bit of it. Even the more disgusting bits. There we go. When I've scooped most of the stuff out, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to take it off the stuff. I'm um, just let it settle a bit so that the water can stay at the bottom and the oil will rise all to the top. And then I will scoop it off with a ladle like this one and I will just throw it through my little sieve there and just strain everything through that as well. Um, then I will keep an eye on it, just make sure that there's no water in it when I move it over to my plastic containers. The plastic containers, if you have rendered your stuff that there's no water in it left, um, you can store it in a cool, dry, dark place um, for quite some time. But I prefer to put them in a fridge. I've got a specific, a, a special fridge outside that I use for all my oils. So I will store this, my essential oils, um, all my other olive oil, everything. I keep it in a fridge. 
here in South Africa it can become quite warm so it can spoil very easily so it's just it just extends your shelf life for all of your oils now these won't stay in the fridge much for a long time I'm gonna use it I'm gonna make traditional boersiep from it I will do a separate video for that that is basically a very traditional laundry soap here in South Africa so I will do that there okay so most of my meaty bits is scooped out I think here yeah, on this side might be a little bit more no I think most of it is out there's a little bit that's still boiling over there I'm just going to switch off the heat here let it stand for a tiny little bit and then I will start to scoop it out and I will strain it through my piece of cloth there so yeah so and while all of this is happening I am going to try to wash my dishes over here we've got load shedding for electricity in a short while this is about the the bits that I've taken out of here you can actually squish out some of the um, oil still here and try to save some of that but we've got load shedding and it seems like we've got water shedding as well there is the amount of water I have at the moment so I'm just going to try to collect some water to wash my dishes let this stuff cool down a bit and then I will come back to you when we've rendered some of this fat and I have made it in time for the last little bit of water to wash my dishes yay just for interest is there anybody else that's got all of these tiny little tester soaps in the windowsill I've usually get I usually have more than these but um yeah I just tidied up a little bit of them so okay let's over to our soap this cool down for a little while now and now I'm going to use my ladle and I'm going to start to scoop the top well off and I'm going to pour it over in here and I'm going to strain it through it is gone so now it's low chilling for the electricity the water is gone as well <laughs> you know what it sounds terrible but it's not really that bad at least we don't have bombs falling on top of us and that kind of stuff so we're relatively peaceful here I do have water from time to time I just need to get my timing right we do have electricity most of the time I sleep warm and dry so there's a lot of to be thankful for so yeah the part of the water shedding is because of the load shedding the electricity um, because the moment when the electricity goes off they don't pump water anymore so there's actually just a shortage of water already because the town actually grew faster than the infrastructure kept up so this is not all over South Africa um, the load shedding is all over South Africa, water shedding not. That is just one of the challenges of our small little town here. So there is definitely bright side street as well. Ah, oh, our fly got a friend. There's, and now there are these two. Let me just show you here in the pot. I'm cl getting closer to the water layer here um, you will see as soon as you reach the water you will see how it actually goes into the spoon and then you know okay now it's time to stop I usually just strain this as well get all the meaty bits out pour it back into the pot and then I just add more fat on top of that I will do that as soon as we have electricity again but at least I've got actually quite a lot of strength for the first round here. Just a 
just actually like to show you what the water looks like in here you scoop at the bottom there and if you can see there there is the watery part there at the bottom so you will definitely be able to see when you are starting to scoop up water and when to stop there I actually added quite a little bit of water this time you can add more water to your rendering process but yes there as soon as you start to scoop the water part in it you will be able to see that so here on this side this is busy straining through just to make sure all the little meaty bits are strained out of it it's quite clear there at the bottom so i will get some lovely white fat when it's cooled down oh, so the next step i will show you when it's cooled down and that is about it for rendering fat here so i hope this will help you a lot on figuring out how to render your fat and your oils um, I will do a separate video on how to use it in soap making. So, happy fat rendering and soap making until I see you guys the next time.